Good evening everyone, time for another member update. This chart is a chart of Deutsche Bank AG. I don't know if this is an ADR, this is traded on the New York Stock Exchange, but it's the equivalent of the Deutsche Bank chart and uh, what it's done over the years here. So uh, I'm breaking down this chart because I'm trying to use this chart to demonstrate uh, that basically we are on borrowed time, that we are on life support right now. And I personally believe that we're on life support because they're waiting for the outcome of the U.S. election, which is an absolutely critical election. Every election seems to be critical at the time, but this one is really critical. Uh, which way is it going to go? I pretty much already know that we have the choice of either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, and those are some really shocking outcomes either way. But just looking at the technicals of this chart, the reason why I pulled this up is because so many people have talked about the, the derivatives position and the trouble that Deutsche Bank is in and uh, the state of the world economy. And I'm going to read an article here actually from Deutsche Bank but I just wanted to do some technical analysis on this chart to show you why this to me is so shocking that it really is a chart that demonstrates to me that we're on life support. So the first thing you want to notice here is that the move before the financial crisis occurred is roughly a move from 160 down to below 16. So that's a more than a 90% decline in the value of this bank. And you can see that with the financial resurrection that they did by printing an unbelievable amount of money or debt or reflating the bubble and going to zero interest rates and QE1, QE2, QE3, Operation Twist, all of the things we don't even remember that they did to reflate the economy, you can see that uh, Deutsche Bank rallied about a 50% uh, return. You can see the high was 160, it went back to 80. Um, so, but then you can see this long steady decline from that 80 price that was actually reached in the fall of 2009. It's been a long steady decline since then, uh, but uh, it's also forming what I would call a falling pennant formation and just looking at the chart it's hard to see it because I've drawn so many things in here but uh, from a technical traders perspective this is a absolutely bizarre chart you don't see charts like this in stocks uh, what you normally see in stocks is say right here when it's approaching this old low it will crash below it go to bankruptcy and it it'll be gone like Enron WorldCom or any of a large number of Lehman Brothers uh, type companies that went to zero, General Motors, etc. So many of them, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, etc. But that's not what you see on this chart. What you see on this chart is a bizarre uh, pennant. Uh, the only thing I can describe this as a life support formation. So I want you to note the increasing volume here. So if you look at this arrow that I drew, the crash of this stock actually occurred on very, very light volume. And that's important to understand because it doesn't take a lot of sellers to crash a stock. We know that stock prices, and for the most part, almost all prices are formed at the margin. It's a, a small percentage of the holders that are the buyers and sellers that determine the price. Usually it's anywhere from 1% to 5% of the owners of any particular thing that are active that determine the price. So what's interesting about the volume on this chart is that we have this massive 90% collapse on relatively little volume. Now the next spike we get is the biggest volume we've ever had right here to reflate this thing. And it did. It reflated about 50% until it started to fall off. And then we had some kind of massive sell spike here, and we had a test in 2012. 
that or late 2011 that resulted in a lot more volume you can see the volume that came in in this area is actually larger than anything we had all of the volume total for the entire 90 percent sell-off we had more coming in here but you can see the trend line that i've drawn on the volume actually continues to increase so in a normal market when you see massive volume spikes those are usually accompanied by large price moves that's just the nature of things when there's a massive sell-off everybody piles on they all sell together it crashes down and reaches a new low which brings in enormous buyers gives you something like a spike there and a spike there to create a little bit of a rally now let's move to the current action here you can see on the chart although i've got these declining trend lines. I'm trying to show you how the market is tightening into a tighter and tighter range, a down 90 something percent range, and it's tightening right there. It's on life support. This volume proves to you that this is life support. This volume section here on Deutsche Bank is larger than all of the previous volumes put together to amount to virtually no price moves at all. What does this volume indicate? To me, it's very, very clear. This is life support. This is the central banks using printed money to buy up the shares of Deutsche Bank to keep it from collapsing, which would, in my opinion, it would collapse the entire system. Now, it's interesting that we have this article from a Deutsche Bank uh, person and this is the headline a stunning admission from Deutsche Bank why a shock is needed to collapse the market and force a real panic so I'm not going to read all of this but I'm going to read some of this in what may be some of the best and most lucid writing on everyone's favorite topic namely what happens next in the evolution of the financial system Deutsche Bank's Dominic Constum takes a look at the current dead-end monetary situation and concludes that in order for the system to transition from the current state of financial repression, and just to refresh you if you're not familiar with that, financial repression is where central banks lower interest rates so low that uh, basically saving money is an act of confiscation. If you put money aside, uh, you're going to lose some of it, and uh, central banks are forcing you to spend your money where you don't want to spend it, chasing yields, just like we talked about in the last update about how they're uh, chasing people into riskier and riskier uh, investments. Financial repression, which has made a mockery of all asset values due to central bank intervention to a semi-credible system driven by fiscal stimulus there will have to be a crash, one which jolts policymakers out of their stupor that all is well simply because stocks are at all-time highs. And since a legitimate fiscal stimulus is what is needed to reignite the economy, U.S. and global GDP will continue declining even as stocks keep rising to new all-time highs, not on fundamentals, which are all pointing in the opposite direction, but due to an even more central bank intervention and financial repression, thus a catch-22, which ultimately, according to Deutsche Bank, ends in the only possible way, with a major crash. As Constam puts it, quote, the status quo could continue for several years yet if nothing breaks in the system, but without an external economic shock, it's hard to see policymakers being prepared to take dramatic fiscal action to jumpstart the global economy and bounce it out of a financial repression defined by low and falling real yields to one that at least initially is defined by rising nominal yields through a higher through higher inflation expectations as for the conclusion or why a financial shock is long overdue constant says that quote ironically the shock that is needed would require a collapse in risk assets for policymakers to then really panic and attempt dramatic fiscal stimulus this is critical and inevitable as only a shock can lead to an unwind of the falling yield rising equity market where all financial assets trade badly in other words 
the end of financial repression will see price levels fall so that yields once again look attractive or set otherwise, there will be a demand for treasuries, even without the perpetual implicit backstop of central bank purchases. For such a move to be sustainable, it requires the economic fundamentals to shift. Inflation needs to be more secure against an underlying backdrop of robust real growth. Most people now understand that this is not a job for monetary policy alone, yet the current reach for yield simply prolongs the status quo for policy disappointment. I'm not going to go and read the rest of this, but it's excellent. And I think the first comment here is excellent. Uh, this is from New Stackers. Well, that's about the worst thing that could happen. If Constam, unaware of the trillions in debt already accumulated, is he unaware that a normalization of rates at current borrowing requirements would bankrupt every Western nation? Is he unaware of the amount of short-term low interest rate debt that would be rolled over at much higher rates? Something big is going to break when they try to normalize things. Absolutely. And then uh, the next person says, every Western nation is already bankrupt. The question is when, if becoming more bankrupt matters in a fiat world. So I think this is good evidence that we're on life support. I think it's, uh, this chart is the absolute best evidence that to me, this chart screams when we had the breakdown below this old low and we did not get that normal run to zero that you get in any stock, but we had massive intervention of central banks. There's no question to me that they are prop propping up Deutsche Bank, which probably is already bankrupt. But the central banks know that if Deutsche Bank goes under, they all go under. So that tells me that they are holding things off until this election. Uh, I've covered before that we get the election cycle downturn. Um, it's, uh, it's a rational and logical thing for the powers that be to do because they're always worried about who gets the blame. Obviously, if Obama can limp into the election with a decent economy, he doesn't get the blame. That's what happened with Bush. Uh, the next person can take the blame, but then they can also justify an enormous spending spree, which that's what Deutsche Bank is implying we're going to get. Uh, so I wanted to finish up with the national debt clock, and I just wanted to use this to show you another reason why we are absolutely on life support. Some of these numbers are sh so shocking, and I've covered them before, uh, the first one I want to look at here is U.S. federal budget deficit, which they report to be $531 billion, which is an absolute joke because it's currently $1.2 trillion. So this number is off by $700 billion. But let's look at what makes up the current budget of the U.S. And you can see here that... U.S. federal tax revenues at 3.3 trillion, U.S. federal spendings at 3.8 trillion, but let's add up the payments here. We've got 1 trillion in Medicare, Medicaid. Actually, we'll say 1.1. We've got 906 billion in Social Security. So between Social Security and Medicare, Medicaid, we have 2 trillion dollars out of a total of 3.3 trillion dollars in income. We'll skip the defense and war because we're going to be concentrating just on transfer payments. Income security, that's basically welfare. That puts us at $2.3 trillion. Skip the debt and go to the federal pensions. That's two point, that brings us to a total of $2.6 trillion. So $2.6 trillion of our federal tax revenues are transfer payments from taxpayers to to tax consumers. And it's it's even worse than that. So let's look at the population, which is 324 uh, million people. But we have to look at the actual taxpayers and U.S. income taxpayers are less than 120 million. So 
that's a very small percentage. You can see the not in labor force number is now at 94. They give you a good comparison here because they show you the uh, not in labor force from 2000, and it's actually increased from 79 million to 94 million. That's all the people that are not in the labor force. But look at the number of people who are food stamp recipients, 43 million. Medicaid recipients, 74 million. Total receiving benefits, 162 million people out of a population of 324 million people are receiving benefits. So it's my contention that we are currently on life support. We are simply waiting for the collapse. Uh, we are in a holding pattern, waiting for this massive, unprecedented, incredible, unbelievable, worldwide collapse that is just right around the corner. I think silver, when you look at the silver chart, silver is also waiting for something to happen. You can see that it's clearly in that flag formation. It's backed off a little bit, but nothing significant. We can see that we had a move from the $14 price to 20 and it hasn't backed off. It's just taken a pause. And that tells me, I'm thinking, that silver is also pausing, it's waiting, it's in a holding pattern. Uh, we're on life support of the current system. And when this thing blows, we're talking about this sort of thing. And we'll talk to you next time.